Welcome to Hanging with Hyde. I'm Heidi Jo Lopez, and as you can tell, there's a little, there's new scenery back here. If you can look back there, this is my mom's wall, and uh, yeah, there's lots of pictures of me growing up over there. Well, I'm not growing up on the wall, obviously, but anyway, <laughs> so um, it's Wednesday, and this is the second Wednesday I'm officially uh, filming, so it's very exciting. And um, I'm at my mom's because, I don't know, some of you may know, um, my mom was diagnosed with Parkinson's uh, with dementia, which, don't worry, God said he's given her a Lazarus moment, he's calling her out, so I fully am standing with my sisters and others who are praying and standing and declaring and believing um, that mom is fully healed and God is going to resurrect her out of that. So we're very excited. But um, in the meantime, um, my mom has 24 hour caregivers and so she's in there taking a little nap and getting ready for her breakfast. And so I'm going to do this show. Uh, so let's just open up in prayer because I technically don't know exactly where um, the Holy Spirit wants to go. And so we're just going to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for this beautiful day, even though it's slightly overcast. Thank you that uh, I'm alive and that we are here right now with uh, friends watching, Father. I just thank you for your holiness. I thank you for your words that you have been speaking through the prophets, through your prophets. I thank you for those that are standing right now in this time that seems bleak, but yet is so uh, full of the your energy that your glory is about to come down and just totally transform us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for that. Holy Spirit, I just completely give myself over to you for you to say whatever it is you want to say. I thank you for the privilege and the honor of being used as your vessel. I ask that you bless those that are watching, that they will hear exactly what you want them to hear, and that they will go away from this changed, encouraged, and inspired, and um, empowered, and strengthened. We just thank you for that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So... Um, today I thought I would talk to you about, um, some fresh revelation that God has been giving me. Uh, he's been waking me up a lot in the middle of the night and, uh, bringing that scripture alive, uh, in Matthew, and I'm thinking, is it 1027? Well, um, so yeah, so that scripture is in Matthew 1027. And uh, just so you know, I was taping the show and then my husband called in the middle and stopped the video. So here I am again. Um, so yeah, so God's just been waking me up with all this fresh revelation. And and uh, yesterday he reminded me that um, of the scripture in Matthew 10, 27, which is whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light and whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And you know what's crazy is, so that scripture has always spoken to me, but in this time in particular, there's been all this um, like deep diving into the Lord, right? And so he's been compelling me to know him deeper and understand him more and reading the scriptures. And I've been understanding the authority that he's um, given each one of us who know him intimately and, and have the blood of Jesus um, completely removing all of our sin because we've accepted him as not just our savior, but we are, it, it, we've asked him to be the complete eternal and uh, Lord of our lives. So so I have completely given myself over to him. And uh, as he's been calling me, you know, it says, what does it say? You know, the deep calls unto deep. And uh, I don't have the address for that in the Bible, but that's Bible knowledge. So look it up. Uh, the deep calls unto deep. And I just, it's the, that scripture just came alive to me the other night as he woke me up at 110. And, um, <laughs> all the way until like five and matter of fact I actually did a show and I thought oh okay wow I did the show and I thought this was really powerful and then I started to listen to it the next morning and I was like okay yeah I sound like I'm super lethargic and asleep so I thought okay that's okay it was a good dry run right and so anyway so here I am today and I just want to tell you something simple and it's it's about um our identity in Christ. And we hear that as Christians, we hear that word. And we, you know, many of us, let's be honest, we think, what does that mean? My identity is in Christ, right? Do I identify myself as a Christian? Is that it? You know, 
and I always thought, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm Jesus's, you know, I, I should look to myself in Christ. You know, I've been grafted into the vine because I accepted Jesus as my savior and, and all of those things are true. But God started showing me how much deeper it is. He said, when you, um, you know, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And I'm, I'm missing a portion of that scripture, but when you do, when you dive into him and you're seeking him, seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you, right? I mean, that's scripture. You can look that up too. I don't have the, the address, but you can look it up. In, and I started to think about those and chew on those scriptures. And God just said, he said, your identity is in, in me. So as I begin to seek him in, in the scripture, in the Bible, you know, and I began to read and to know him. And when I, when I start to, um, sit with him quietly and I listen to him or when he wakes me up in the middle of the night and I get up and I hear him speak a word and he says, get up and write this down. I get up and write it down, you know, and then I go into a time of worshiping him and praying and, and asking for him to reveal himself to me and insights. And I have to tell you, man, the other night when he just, just started exploding fresh revelation. And when I say fresh revelation, I mean like opening my brain to see scripture in a way that I've never seen it before. So, uh, example, Holy Spirit, what example do you want me to give? Um, Okay, so I'm gonna give this example. I still haven't worked this all the way out, so you know, bear with me. But he showed me, now I've heard before, and I had been taught before that the rock, so in uh, when the Israelites were brought out of Egypt by Moses, well, by God, and Moses led them, and then they crossed the Red Sea, which was spectacular and amazing, and then, um, in a sense, I feel bad for Moses because he had to spend 40 years uh, with grumbling people who did nothing but complain and whine and until they basically died off and the new generation uh, came up and then they were ready to enter the promised land. That was a super quick explanation of 40 years. And um, But anyway, while they were in the wilderness, uh, the people, because they had such a slave mentality, right? They had been, they had been over 400 years as slaves. So they, no, they had never had to forage for their own food. They had never hunted for their own food they weren't allowed weapons so they couldn't hunt you know they they didn't even they didn't even have to go out and bring their water in or dig wells for their water it was like everything was basically prepared for them so they worked and worked you know to to um make the bricks to build you know everything in egypt uh but i'm trying to keep it really simple so when they were in the wilderness you know for 40 years with moses they were saying, well, is it, well, did you bring us out here to die? Where's our water? Where's our food? Where's this? Where's that? You know, and they're basically complaining. And they, not basically, they are. And so God's, you know, provided them food. He provided them the manna. When they got tired of that, they were like, well, well gee, we had meat in Egypt at least. And so then they got quail. And, you know, well, our, we're going to, we don't have any water. And so this rock, which has, which, you know, was Jesus, because in the New Testament, we know Jesus is the rock. Um, and so, I know, I'm, I'm trying to be super simple. Um, so just to let you know, if I haven't said this before, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, and the, and the, the New, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. So, we know things about the Old Testament because of the new. So when we learn that Jesus is the rock, and uh, then we know that everything that talked about the rock, especially capitalized in the Old Testament, was referring to Jesus. So that rock was the water. So God said to Moses and Aaron, I want you to speak to the rock, and it's going to gush forth water to feed my people, which of course also talks about how when Jesus met the woman at the well, which I talked about last time, 
and he said, if you only knew you'd be asking me for a drink, because if you drank from my water, living water, you would never thirst again. And she's thinking, I want that water. And of course, he's talking about spiritual water that we can literally be washed in such a way that we could never thirst again because the revelation of water, the water of revelation just keeps coming. And we just have this incredible mind-blowing experience after mind-blowing experience with, with the Holy God. And that's the deep calls out to deep, you know? So, so anyway, so he showed me in this fresh revelation that the reason that that Moses struck the rock, even though God directed him not to. And I know there's going to be some, we got to figure out, you know, well, Moses struck the rock. God said not to strike the rock. God told him, because you struck the rock, you don't get to go into the promised land. Was that a punishment? You know, um, I don't know my Hebrew, so I, I haven't done a word study on it, but I just know what the Lord told me. He said, when Moses struck that rock, it needed to occur because when Jesus was hanging on the cross dying for our sins, uh, which he became sin so we could become clean, cleansed when we asked him into our hearts as Savior to, and, and confessed our sins to him. When he was hanging on the cross, they, they struck him in the side, those that were crucifying him, and it said that blood and water flowed. Okay, so God said to me, the blood... It's because there was two parts of the cross, not just one, not for just salvation. He said, the blood, of course, was for the cleansing of sin, all of our sin for all time, past, present, future. So for all time, the water represented the water that, that flows from the throne of God, that revelatory water that is just full of God, living and breathing, that used to flow, th that fl flowed through the Garden of Eden, that Adam and Eve got to walk in and be around and they could have fresh revelation at all time, that all revelation comes from this flowing river of water from the throne of God. So God said the water flowed to show that Jesus had taken dominion because we already knew. I mean, God already knew it was done because, you know, even though we're seeing things happening in the tangible, in the moment, in God, it's already finished because he knows the end from the beginning. So, um, so anyway, so Jesus went to hell, um, died, buried and you know, took the keys of the grave, rose on the third day with those keys in his hand and brought, took back all dominion and authority that Satan had basically stolen they were never his but Adam yielded them with his sin you know in the garden and gave that authority to Satan and so Jesus took it back and he reestablished the authority that he, that God had already always planned and destined for mankind to have so Jesus reestablished it and God said that's why cuz everything that happens in the old testament you know has to has to come you know, will everything that happens in the New Testament had to have been foretold in the Old Testament. So when Moses struck the rock and the water flowed, that was that portion, right? That showed that the revelatory water, that living water was going to come out. That's why it is so essential when Jesus meets the woman at the well, that he says, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for a drink and I would give you living water and you would never thirst again. Because how many times as Christians or how many times if you don't know Christ that you feel dry and parched and um, alone and scared or confused or all of these things, right? But God says, I am the living water. Jesus, I am the living water. I'm the living water. I'm the one that went and restored that back to the earth and put you back in your rightful place of authority. So it's God uh, mankind, then angels, then animals, then plant life earth, right? Those are the five kingdoms. So God reestablished us back in that authority order. So this was this beautiful revelatory word that he showed me. And then he said to me, he said, this is your identity in me. This is you learning how deep it means to have your identity in Christ. He said, every time you dive into me, every time you seek my face, every time I speak to you and I reveal new things to you, you're doing a deep dive into me. Because what does it do? It makes me hungrier, right? I'm hungrier to know him. Every time we're touched by the Holy Spirit, 
it makes us hungrier for him, right? Oh, it's so incredible. So you get so hungry for the word of God and then you're like, I want to read more. Are you going to reveal more? Reveal to me, Lord. Reveal to me. Reveal to me. Speak to me. Let's, let's deepen this relationship. That's how powerful fresh revelation is. That's how powerful this God relationship can be and is if we dive into it. So it's that deep calling out to deep. It's like, Heidi, wake up. Wake up, Heidi. I want to talk to you some more. I want to talk to you some more. So it's the scripture in Matthew, right? 10, 27, whatever, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And it hit me. I was like, the dark, of course. Because God talks to me at night all the time, right? Because we're calm. We're probably asleep in the moment. Busyness is away. Distraction is at, at the minimum or zero. And I've heard the prophets and other, other leaders say, man, God wakes me up at night all the time or he speaks to me while I sleep or I wake up in the night and I have to keep a journal by my bed because I have to record what he tells me. And so as he's been waking me up even more and I've been writing down things when he says, get up, Heidi, I need you to write this down. I want you to record this because I want to speak truth out in the light. I want you to tell everybody what I'm saying. And so he's saying, Ask him before you go to bed. Ask him, speak to me tonight, Lord. Speak to me, whether it's in a dream, whether you speak to me audibly, whether you wake me up with the <gasps> moment, right? The, oh my gosh, is that true, Lord? Is that true? I mean, those moments. And you get super excited, right? It was like he gave me this incredible fresh revelation a while ago that it just hit me. I was just doing the dishes, so I wasn't even asleep. I wasn't, you know, in prayer when he gave me this, I was doing the dishes and all of a sudden it just came at me like <gasps> it and how God speaks to me a lot is as I, 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 all I know how to explain it is it's like an impression. So, but in that impression, I hear the word, see the word, feel the word, right? So in that moment, I can see the picture of what he's showing me. I can hear it and I can, um, it's like, um, and I can feel it like it's that deep. Uh, so like I'm sitting there doing dishes and there's a scripture in Timothy that, uh, has always bothered me as a woman or confused me as, as a Christian, safe Christian. And it says that women are basically, um, redeemed through childbirth. What? So men get to be redeemed by the blood of the lamb, but we're redeemed to childbirth. I'm like, that can't be right because I know that we are, that God doesn't look at us different than male and female. So what do you mean by that, Lord? And I have wrestled with that scripture on and off for years. And, um, and so there I am not even thinking about it. I haven't thought of that scripture and I don't know how long, right? I don't know. I haven't, I, I have no idea how long I haven't thought of that scripture. I'm washing dishes and all of a sudden that scripture pops in my head and the answer pops in with it. And he says, of course women are redeemed through childbirth. One childbirth, the birth of the risen King, Jesus Christ. And he said, I redeemed Mary's deception of the enemy. In the, I mean, not Mary, Eve's deception of the enemy in the garden through the birth of my son, a woman because God could have sent salvation, I think, in any way. He really could have. I mean, he's God. So he could have sent it any way. He chose to take um, a virginal woman without, what, which the world would think, without blemish, right? And obviously she was a woman who loved the Lord fully or he wouldn't have picked her. She was, had already given the Lord her life as best she could as a young Jewish girl. And he picked a woman to put his seed in because through that and through the birth of the son, Jesus Christ, Eve's sin of deception to the enemy in the garden was redeemed. And through, and through Christ hanging on the cross, through Jesus hanging on the cross and dying and going to hell, going to the, to death, and taking the keys back, that redeemed Adam's chosen sin to eat of the fruit in the garden. That completely redeemed both of them. 
So when when that scripture is in there and it says women will be redeemed, it's like, and that bothered me. Now it doesn't bother me because God said, of course I would redeem the woman for being deceived. Because what happened? What was the curse that came upon her? Not God putting it on her. That was the curse that came upon her because she sinned. That childbirth would be greatly increased in pain and that she would have enmity with with Satan and his, you know, basically offspring and he would have enmity with her. Okay, hello people, right? Mary gives birth to Jesus. Satan has serious enmity with, with, with Jesus, right? Okay, beautiful, huh? I hope you got that fresh revelation. I hope it made complete sense. It's just alive in me. I hope I explained it well. Um, and if I didn't, then just ask the Holy Spirit to just wash over you and give you fresh revelation. And look all these things up for yourself. As God starts to open your mind, when you listen to people that start speaking revelatory word about the Bible, start looking it up for yourself and going, Holy Spirit, show me. And as he shows it to you, it's like it comes alive and you can't stop seeing it. It's like, what do they say? You know, um, once you know something, you can't unknow it. Okay, it's like that. So once I realized that this incredible living, breathing book is alive right now and that there are like, talk about the best treasure hunt of all time, right? It's in here. Dig it up, dig it up, dig it up. You know, it's that beautiful scripture, Proverbs 25, 2. You know, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. And it's the glory of kings, which we're kings because Revelation 1, 6, we are called kings and priests. So we know we're kings. So we are the kings he's talking about. It is the glory of kings to search out a matter. So it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search it out. How cool is that? So get in there. Don't be afraid. As I'm sharing fresh revelation or you're hearing fresh revelation about biblical, about the Bible, about scripture that you may have read millions of times or maybe only once or maybe never before. But as you're hearing fresh revelation, get in there, read it for yourself, dig in. And as you dig in and you ask Holy Spirit to open your mind, to be able to see and understand, open your heart to be able to receive it, to see and understand so you can have fresh revelation because he wants to give it to you. It's not just he only picks, oh, there's 10 people I'm going to bless with this. No, this is Joel 2 time. Look it up. I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh that, that sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. And on my maidservant to my manservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Woo! And you know, how cool is that? This is that time. Look it up. Read it. Soak it in and let deep call out to deep for you. Let your identity in Christ become so complete that you start to understand the authority that he's given you in a whole new way. And we'll revisit and talk about authority and talk about some of these things that God has. It's going to be amazing. I'm super excited for this time and I'm just going to pray for you. Lord God, I just ask for you to just bless, bless, bless these people who are hearing this and make this word real to them, that they too can have fresh revelation from you, that this is just not for a handful, but you want to pour out this to every single one of those who know you as Lord and Savior. You want them to know you like that. You're inviting them in right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for this. And I ask that you make it concrete. And I ask, Father, will you please show your love to them in this moment so they can feel that incredible love and they know it's real in Jesus' name. Thank you. And if you don't know the Savior Jesus Christ yet, you can know him. The Bible says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The name of the Lord is Jesus Christ. You can just say simple, Lord Jesus, I believe what Heidi's saying and I want relationship with you and I know that I am a sinner and I confess those sins in Jesus' name. And then just say, make yourself real to me. Make yourself real to me because I can see that you've made yourself real in Heidi. I want to know that relationship. Show me, show me that you love me like that. And I can guarantee he's going to do it. He did it to me the very first moment we met when I was six. He made himself super real to me. So ask him to make himself super real to you. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of glory. So be excited. 
Get in the word. Don't be afraid. It, don't think it's going to be difficult. The moment that you accept Jesus as Savior, there is this um, veil that comes off of your brain. And it starts to make this book become uh, readable, understandable, tangible. And then when you ask Holy Spirit to wash over you and enter you and to speak to you through it, it becomes even more real. And just simple, just to make it simple for those that don't know, um, God is a triune Godhead. It means he is three persons in one. So he is Father God, Jesus the Son, Holy Spirit. They are all one Lord God, but they are also individual beings in one, like the egg. It has a shell, it has a white part, it has a yolk. It's still one egg. Okay, just keeping it simple, keeping it real. I don't want anybody to be confused. Be blessed, and I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Bye.